Hello, ladies and gentlemen um, of IDS. We are going to be talking about lesson two from our unit two, section one. Okay, and the title of this lesson is What Does Mean Mean? Okay, so I want you guys to think about real quick think about the word mean um, in terms of math, and what are some synonyms that you know about the for, for the word mean, right? Um, so Something that might come to mind maybe is average, um, you know, typical, um, the center, right? And these are all words that might represent the mean of a data set, okay? So materials that you're going to need for our Lesson 2 class today, you will need your Unit 2 Section 1 journal opened and ready to go. You will also need your notes notebook and or your unit 2 practice book pages 13 14 and 20. Um, you will also need two activities from our canvas page that you will be turning in today uh, the 2.2a balancing point activity and the 2.2b mr jones's mile run times activity okay so you will need these four things for class so i suggest you guys pause the video get all of this ready for yourselves and then come back to the video all right, so now that you are ready to get started with class, let us begin by talking about our objective and our essential concepts here. Our objective for today is that you will learn that values that gather around the center of a distribution show the typical value. So pay attention to that. Values that gather, my apologies, values that gather around the center of a distribution show the typical value. This value is also referred to as the mean or the average. Okay, this value is also referred to as the mean or the average. So whatever gathers around the center of our distribution, right? It's also known as the mean or an average. Our essential concept, essentially the takeaway for today's lesson, is that the center of a distribution is the typical value. Remember, the word typical doesn't cover all of the data, right? It doesn't even begin to give us a picture of all of the data. Um, it just kind of represents what, what's, what's more prevalent, right? What's there more often? Um, or what, do we see, what, do we, what, what are we seeing more of, essentially? Um, it's, it's very, like I said in class, it's very like stereotypes, right? Um, when you say, you know, high school teenagers, these, like, if you say the stereotypical, like high school teenagers don't know how to spell because all they do is text. It's not true for everyone, right? Some of you guys really do need to work on, um, your spelling, but, um, a lot of you guys can spell just fine. It's just, you know, you have different contexts when you're texting you use text language when you're writing you use regular writing english right so one way of measuring the center is with the mean which finds the balancing point of the distribution the mean gives us the typical value but does not tell us the whole story so we need a way to measure the the variability the variety that we get um, in our data to understand how observations might differ from that typical value. Okay, so for example, um, the mean, aka the average, right? If, if we were to talk about, let's say we had some data and it said the average height or the mean height of um, young ladies is 5'6". And they tell us that, that that's the mean height for young ladies. Okay, that's, that's, that might be true, but that doesn't tell you the story of me who is only 5'2", right? you know that the mean or the average young lady is 5'6", but that doesn't tell you exactly how many young ladies are also 5'2", um, or taller than that and like, you know, 6'3", or something like that. So the mean gives you an idea of the middle, but it doesn't necessarily give you any idea of what's outside of the middle, okay? So let's take a look, some fun-filled definitions. You wanna get this down in your notes, Okay, on page 13, um, you have a place that you can write these definitions down in your unit to practice book, or you can just take it down in your 
notes notebook or your Google Doc for notes. Okay, so it says measures of central tendency. So the following definitions um, are for measures of central tendency and measures of variability. So measures of central tendency. Okay, a value that shows the tendency of quantitative data to gather around a central or typical value, also known as measures of center. Quantitative data is numerical data. It's data that, um, it's data that's numbers, right? It's not categorical. So it's a value that shows the tendency of numerical data um, that to gather around a central or a typical value. We also call this the measures of center. Now, we also have measures of variability, okay? So the variety in our data and how spread out it is. So measures of variability is values that show how much the quantitative data varies. It's also known as measures of spread, right? So how, how, um, how much variety there is in your data and of course, how spread out your data is, right? Is your data between 10 and 20 or is your data between zero and, and 2000, right? So how spread out is your data? Um, so that's important to look at as well. So we have measures of center and we have measures of spread or variability, okay? So if you still need to finish writing this down, please pause the video and finish taking this down. All right, so we have our first IDS entry. Um, and after, so I want you to paraphrase the definitions of measures of central tendency and measures of variability in your IDS journal as if you were speaking or explaining it to a fifth grader, okay? So pause the video. Take some time, take two minutes to, to paraphrase those definitions and then come back to the video. All right, so let's remember way back when, okay, way back when. Do you still remember how to compute or calculate the mean or an average? Okay, what does it mean to you? How would you calculate the mean or the average if I gave you a bunch of numbers, right? So I want you to think back. You did this way back um, in, in, in middle school. We've done it again in, um, in high school in Algebra 1. We've probably seen it again in geometry. So you, you've done mean or average. You've calculated it quite often. Okay. So we're going to try to um, calculate our, the mean or the average. And if you guys remember back then, hopefully you're thinking something along the lines of, you would take all the numbers that you had and you would add all the numbers together and then divide by the number of numbers that you had, the quantity of numbers that you had. So if you had 10 values, you would add all 10 values together but and then you would divide by, the, by 10, right? Because you had 10 values. So we wanna take a look at um, our balancing point activity now. So we're gonna be working on the 2.2a activity and we're going to look at it uh, to see another way of finding the mean, okay? So another way to find the mean is to find the balancing point of a distribution. So it's really important that you guys understand that the mean is a balancing point for our distribution, okay? Um, so we're going to do this by uh, going to the balancing point app. And uh, you will have a, a activity called the balancing point worksheet. It's the 2.2a balancing point. So I'm gonna click on this, okay? And it's gonna take us over to this lesson two um, page here. This is the student curriculum for lesson two. Now listen carefully. You are going to scroll down here and you're going to click on for number seven, you're going to click on IDS Balancing Point app, okay? This handout can be found in the Canvas uh, assignment, okay, that in the Canvas assignment that you can see right here. So 2.2a Balancing Point. These directions are also, um, the link is also here. The direction to click on the IDS Balancing Point app on number seven is also here. And then of course you have your document here for you to open up your 2.2a balancing point 
uh, worksheet, okay? So I'm gonna go back here, we're gonna click on the IDS Balancing Point app here, okay? And then we're gonna, we're gonna just follow along with our balancing point. We're gonna follow along with the activity um, and it's gonna give us specific instructions, okay? It says the balancing point of a data set is the point on a number line where the data distribution is balanced. Use the instructions below to find the balancing point of the following set of numbers, two, three, five, six, and nine. So here are our instructions. It says, uh, step one, drag a token and place it above each of the numbers in the set. So two, three, five, six, and nine. So we're gonna take this, we have a point. So here's two, okay, here's three, we have five, six, and nine. Okay. So we took a, a we took a dot and we put it above each one of these words here. Okay, two, three, five, six, and nine. Step two, it says select mean. Okay, make sure make sure find mean is selected. So we want to make sure that find mean is selected there. Okay, um, ooh, wrong tab, guys. Uh, step three, okay, we have uh, step three here is to click and drag the yellow triangle, the fulcrum, until the green line is balanced. So we want this green line to be balanced, and we're going to be clicking and dragging that guy. So you are going to grab this, and you're going to click and drag, and, and make sure you're going to try to find the spot where this, this horizontal line might balance up, right? So that's what you're gonna do there. Um, and then you're gonna uh, click on show calculation to have the computer calculate the mean. And you're gonna answer what do you notice and what number does it balance on, okay? And then it has you do a few more, okay? So it says use the balancing method to find the mean of each data set below. So you're gonna do uh, this uh, 22899 and so on. Right. If, if numbers repeat, you can put two numbers, kind of like a, a, a dot plot, right? You can put two things there. Um, is there a way to, um, yeah, there we go. Pulled it out. Okay. So you can, you can put double there, okay? And you can move things back to reset things, okay? So you're going to complete this. So pause the video, complete this activity, submit it answer these questions and make sure that you read the directions, answer all questions in blue, or it will not be graded, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So you're gonna finish this activity and then you're gonna come back to our PowerPoint here, okay? So, so if you're back here, that means you have finished the 2.2a balancing point worksheet. Now I want you to go to your IDS journal and as you answer the questions in the balancing point handout, I want you to write any additional wonderings or thoughts that you may have in your IDS journal. So as you're working on your handout, you're gonna, you, you, I'm sure you had, as you were working, you had some additional wonderings and thoughts. And I want you to put them down in your IDS journal, okay? The goal of this activity was that it, it is very important to understand the idea that the mean of a distribution can be identified by finding the balancing point of the values, okay, the balancing point, okay? So that's an important concept to make sure you take away. So take take a moment and, and make sure that those things have, that you've put into your IDS journal, um, and then come back to here so we can talk about understanding distributions. So if you're back, that means we are talking about understanding distributions. It says, consider the visualization on the right showing the results from the personality color survey from another class okay so we're looking at these results of a personality color survey from an, another class it says recall your own predominant and secondary colors from when you completed that survey okay so over what you're seeing is a dot plot of the scores that people entered in for the color blue. So you can see that we have um, some scores. These, this is the, these are the score values here. Okay, and we can see that uh, we have a count of 
of people with those values here, right? So um, we have one here, two, one, two, three, four here, one, one. So we had three people with a score of a 10, um, one with a seven, four with eight, one with a nine, and so on. You can see that. We don't have any pe people that had a perfect score of 20. We had like one person that had a 19, one an 18, and so on. So these are the score values, right? A dot plot of the score values for the color blue. Um, so what, what I want you guys to do is, is by looking at this dot plot of the score values for the color blue, okay? Um, I want you guys to answer the following questions in your IDS journal. What do you think the typical blue score is? predicted balancing point. So what do you think the typical blue score is? So we're talking about the predicted balancing point. Um, are the data roughly symmetric? Where is the balancing point of this distribution? Once a value is chosen by you, describe the location of the point in the dot plot in your IDS journal. Okay, so you're looking at this and you're trying to identify that typical value. So pause the video, go to your IDS journal, answer these questions, and come back, okay? So you should be back at this point. So I wanna talk to you guys about computing the mean, okay? Let's compute the mean here. So we are looking at uh, the mean, we wanna compute the mean of the blue score. Right? We want to complete the mean of the score for the color blue for the entire class. Notice this is not our class. Okay, This is not our class. It's just a class. So what we want to do is we actually want to calculate that mean. That's what compute means. It means to calculate. Right. So we're given a bunch of scores. We're given the blue scores, 8, 7, 12, 18, so on, so on, Right, 12, 10, 11. So we may not remember exactly how to compute the mean, but we're going to try to remember a general formula for computing the mean, which some of you guys may not have seen before, but some of you may have. So if you remember um, here, we have uh, x bar, right? That represents our average. This right here means summation x, so it just means add up all your numbers and then divide by n, which is the number of numbers that we have. That's all that means, okay? So we're going to go ahead and um, first I want to know how many numbers do I have? What is n equal to, right? I want to know what's n equal to. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I have 25 data points there. So the way I'm going to calculate the mean is I'm going to add all of these guys together. And then I'm going to divide by 25 because I will have 25 data points that I'm adding together. Um, I ran out of space there, so we're just going to continue it here. Uh, 13 plus 15, that's a, that's a 5, 15 for that guy. Um, plus 14, plus 8, plus 5, plus 8, plus 9, plus 10, plus 14, plus 12, plus 10, plus 11. Oh boy. So that's all these numbers added together, all 25 of them. And then I'm going to divide whatever that total is by 25. Okay. So take a moment and add all those numbers together. So what this gives us is once I add all of these numbers together here, I'm going to continue this. I'm going to continue this um, up here or to the side here. Um, once I add all of these numbers together, I actually get 293 on the top for the numerator and divided by 25. So when I do 293 divided by 25, I get 11.72. So my mean here, right, my mean, my x bar is equal to 11.72. That right there is my balancing point, okay? That's my balancing point. So um, 
to calculate our mean, as a recap, right, we take all of our numbers here, we add them together, we divide by how many numbers we have, okay? So once again, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right? We have 25 data points there. All right, so um, let's go to our next slide here. So now that you have your um, calculated mean for the blue score, which was our mean here was x is equal to 11.72, I want you to copy the formula into your IDS journal, okay? So our formula x bar is equal to the summation of all of your x's, okay? This just means add all, oops, the values, okay? Divided by n, okay, which, which is the number of values you have, the quantity, right? So copy down that formula into your IDS journal and label each symbol in the formula with a step in your algorithm for finding the mean and write the meaning of the symbols in the formula. So I already did like three-fourths of the work for you here. I already did three-fourths of the work for you. So finish it up in your IDS journal and come on back. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a dot plot for, our, for the blue. So it says sketch the class's dot plot for our blue. Okay, indicate the location of the calculated mean on your sketch by drawing a vertical line at the value on the x-axis. Notice how close the mean value is to your predicted balancing point. So we're not going to be pulling our own data for this. We're actually going to be using the data that we had on the previous slides here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear, um, erase all the ink on the slide, and we want to make sure we want to make a um, we want to make a dot plot now using this information. So you want to find the lowest amount and the highest amount, okay? Um, and that's going to be your starting and your um, yeah, it's going to be your starting and your uh, end point for your number line on your dot plot, right? So if I do a all right, so I kind of started a dot plot, but give me a second. I actually want to um, uh, restart it, so I'm going to erase all the ink there. Um, so as I was saying, our our I'm going to do my dot plot here up top. I want to do it in a more visible area than before. Um, and we wanted to find our lowest amount, which ended up being 5, and our highest amount, which ended up being 19. Okay, so that means we got a span from 5 to 19 on our, no, on our dot plot number line here. So we could go by 5s. That's not going to be a big deal. And then just kind of work our way in between those. Okay, and 20 there. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do is just, just we're just going to look at the numbers and place dots um, above those numbers. So we're going to start at 5. That's our lowest. So I want to number some of this stuff here on the number on the y-axis just for the count okay um, and so we're gonna get started here so we have one dot at five and I'm gonna cross them out as I put them in and we can go in any order really so I have an eight right so here's nine here's eight okay cross that out I have a seven cross that out I have a twelve so 11, 12, so right over here, cross 18, so this is going to be 19, 18. I'm just kind of visualizing the number line in between 18 there. I have another 12, so that's going to go there. I have a 19, that's going to go right there. Cross that out. Um, I have a, another 12, okay, right there. I have another, I have a 14, so 14 is going to be right there. 16, so 16 will be right about there. I have a 10, so straight up from 10. I have another 8, so 8 was here, so I'm going to put my second 8 right there. 
I have another 14, so 14, another 14. I have another one, so that's going to go right above it for the third point. I have a 13, okay, so that was 12, that's, that's a 14, so 13 is going to be right over here. I have a 15 right over here. I have a 14 and again, so that's going to be my fourth 14. I have another eight. I have, and I already did the five, so I have another eight. It's going to go there. I have a nine. So I'll squeeze that in right there between the nine and the 10. I have another 10 right there. I have another 14 right there. I have a 12. Okay, it's going to go there. I have another 10. And I have an 11. So that's going to go right there. Okay. Okay. So there is my uh, dot plot. Okay, and they asked us to take our mean, right? Remember our mean was 11.72 and draw a line at our mean there. Okay, so we want to draw a line that's at our mean. So um, what I want to do, okay, I'm trying to change my color, but it's not, there we go. So at 11.72, so 11.72, that's really close to 12. So that's going to be like, right about here. That's where my mean is, right there. That's my 11.72. That's my balancing point right there. So make sure you guys have this down. Okay, pause the video if you need to, to get this down. Um, I want to continue on here. So this was our uh, creating a dot plot for blue, right? So we created our dot plot and we placed a line for um, our, a vertical line on the x-axis to indicate our mean. And we wanna notice how close the mean value is to your ba predicted balancing point. So you guess the balancing point, right, for this in your IDS journal. I want you to tell, I want you to think about how close this is to what you have predicted. Okay, so we're gonna move on from this um, and we're gonna talk about, okay, is there an easier way to calculate our mean and not have to add so many data points? Because let's be real, for most of us in our class, especially when we start using our class data, we are going to be um, working with anywhere from 25 to 35 data points, right? So if you're anyone, if you're someone that has not input your, your scores into our personality color campaign, your time is running out. So I want to talk to you guys about the, the fact that there is an easier method for calculating the mean using RStudio. So the command RStudio uses to calculate the mean incorporates the algorithm, the formula of summing up all of the data, right, adding it all up, and then dividing it by the total number of observations. So you will be able to use this command for quick calculations now. So um, if you have already exported, downloaded, and import the class's personality color campaign data, you can simply use the exact command below. So remember, if you need help exporting, downloading, and importing our campaign data, um, you can look at the tutorial for Lab 1C from last semester, and it'll show you how to quickly import, ex um, I'm sorry, export, download, and import data, okay? So you can use the command uh, below to calculate the mean for our blue score. So all you got to do is the function is mean. Okay, so we have the, this is our function right here. Um, this is the function, right? This is the color we want the mean of. And then our data we can call colors. Okay, we can call our, our data colors. So in general, the function can be denoted as follows. It could be our, the function itself is the mean function, and then tilde, our variable, comma, data equals whatever the name of our data file is, okay? So I encourage you guys to try this out for our class's own data. 
that would be something cool to try out. And you could even try it out for the other three colors, green, orange, and gold, right? Um, so in your IDS journal, write a short entry in your IDS journal about how the mean value of a group of data could be used to easily describe complicated things. For example, instead of giving someone the entire class's blue scores, we could just tell him or her, her the mean score and he, she would have a general idea about the class. So for the, the mean score that we calculated, right, instead of saying, you know, our scores were 5, 8, 10, and I had another 10, another 12, another 14, we could just say, you know what, it was a mean score of 11.72, which gives them an idea that, you know, most of us were kind of in the middle. So um, our scores for, for blue were somewhat in the middle. They weren't too low. They weren't too high. Okay. So um, let's move on here. Okay, and this brings us to our, the end of our lesson for today, everyone. Okay, so um, I want you guys to think about the three most important topics that we discussed during this lesson, okay? Um, and think about the fact that, I, that, you know, think about balancing point, think about mean, um, think about that center, think about how we calculated the mean, right? All important things that we discussed today. And do not rush off quite yet, my ladies and gents. Um, we actually have homework. I know, right? We actually have homework. But this lesson was so short that you actually have time to do the homework now. So please stop whining. Um, we have our 2.2B activity, Mr. Jones's Mile Run Times. Okay. This is our 2.2B. Again, you can find this in our Canvas page right underneath where you found 2.2a you're going to complete mr jones's mile run times handout and answer the questions below on the given handout so these questions are also on the handout okay so you don't need to copy them down so you can practice finding the mean of distributions by determining a balancing point for the data the mean values in number three on the handout do not need to be exact so the questions that you'll need to answer what kind of plots did Mr. Jones create for his classes? Where does each dis distribution balance? Find and label the balancing point of each distribution. Based on the balancing points you found, what would you say the mean mile run time is for each class? So you'll need to give me the mean mile time for period one, period two, period three, and his period four class. Not my periods, right? His periods. He's that the, the PE teacher there. Okay, so you guys are going to be completing this um, and you are going to be uh, turning this in. Okay, so just to show you where that is um, on, our, on our class page here, right? For lesson two, we have our 2.2B Mr. Jones's mile run times right over here. Okay, so you guys are going to make a copy of the document, complete it, and hand it in. All right, guys, um, just a heads up. Um, Friday is an asynchronous day. Friday is an asynchronous day. So I will be adding, this does not belong here, okay? I this We're not doing lesson three on Friday. Don't stress out. I will be adding a lesson three, uh, or I'm sorry, not lesson three. I will be adding a Friday agenda here for you guys to be doing on our asynchronous day. Um, please take care, and I will see you guys soon. Toodles.